Hello, and welcome to virtual worship here at College Hill Presbyterian Church in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I am the Reverend Todd Freeman, and I have the honor of being the pastor of this community of faith. Uh, last week, I preached to an empty sanctuary and then just simply posted the sermon online. But throughout the week, we realized how important it was to the congregation that we try some video. So this is our first attempt at this. So uh, we are going to start simply, and we ask for a bit of grace as we proceed. And we will begin today with the lighting of the candle of peace. was the candle of peace and inclusiveness, and this was the Christ candle. I'd like to continue with a candle extinguishing liturgy that we have done each week during this season of Lent. It is written by Janine Stedham, uh, and it's from processandfaith.org. For the fourth Sunday in Lent, it's Sunday morning. Last week, with all its demands, is over. The coming week, with yet another round of challenges and demands, is not quite here. 
I invite you to close your eyes and be in the moment. No matter where you are in your thoughts and feelings, relieved about what you have accomplished, anxious about what's left undone, concerned about people or projects, no matter where you are in your journey this day, I encourage you to set all of that aside and consider where you are right now. Whatever is true for you right now in this moment, whether it be joy or sadness, gratitude or anxiety, let it come forward. When it is fully present, then listen. Listen for God. God is present in these moments too. And God meets you where you are and calls you forward moment by moment, guiding you slowly but surely toward transformation. Let us spend just a few moments in silence. As we extinguish this light, we acknowledge the darkness and pain caused by the lack of basic needs, lack of food, of shelter, of education, of health care, of love. And I will add the darkness and pain caused by current isolation and fear and confusion and the disruption of life as we know it. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you that you are with us and that we may call upon you no matter where we are or what we are feeling. Keep us mindful of your presence and trusting in your promise that you are working with us in this moment by moment unfolding of our lives. Amen. Touch mine eyes, dear God above, that I may see to share thy love. At times unknowing, I do not see a friend's affliction a stranger's need. Oh, touch mine ears that I may hear the whispering pain of others' fear. Help me, O oh Father, to do my part. broken hearts to those in pain to those who mourn please heal the blindness that hides their need from me as thou hast given let me so give as thou hast shown us, let me so live, O oh, touch my soul that I may know and learn the lesson of long ago. That when I've served the least of these, I know I've done it unto thee. Oh, 
touch mine eyes, dear God above, that I may see to share thy love. For when I've served the least of these, I know I've done it unto As a way of introduction, I'd like to begin by sharing some words from the Apostle Paul from Philippians 4, 4 through 8. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry or be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. May God bless the reading and the hearing of this word. Amen. We are living in what will forever be considered a monumental moment in the history of the world. Just look how life has changed within the past few weeks. There is not a community, let alone a person, whose life has not been disrupted in some way or another. And while it is never wise to tell other people what to feel or think, there are a few commonalities that I expect are affecting us all. Many people, including myself, have been quite anxious, deeply concerned, confused, a bit fearful, and wondering just what is our purpose in life at this very moment in time. As I mentioned last Sunday, our first Sunday of not gathering together, self-isolation is good now and then. It's an absolute requirement for those of us who are introverts. Forced isolation, however, is proving to be quite a strain on us all. And many people, again, including myself, can let the expectations of what we think we should be doing during this time lead to a sense of just being overwhelmed. So perhaps it would be good for each of us to simply repeat the mantra, I am enough. Now, as a pastor, one of the things that is important to reflect upon is this. Where is God in all of this? Now, theologically and spiritually, I personally do not believe that God is the cause and author of any tragedy, including what we are experiencing in the midst of this worldwide coronavirus pandemic. But I do believe that we can and should look for ways in which we experience how God is present and at work in and through this crisis. And wouldn't you know, today's assigned lectionary gospel reading for the fourth Sunday in Lent can actually help put some of this into focus. 
It is a very long story. It's John 9, 1 through 41. And I encourage you to look it up for yourself and read it in its entirety. But I will only be referring to parts of it this morning. And it starts like this. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? The disciples reflect what is still an all-too-common judgment, that if someone is suffering or ill, then someone must have sinned. Therefore, the malady must be connected to God's judgment and punishment. And if this is the case, then who are we to interfere with God's will? Why get over-concerned with anyone whose poor circumstances in life can be justified? Therefore, allowing the rest of us to distance ourselves from the afflicted. You know, if people deserve their fate, then we can ignore their suffering. And yes, there are still voices out there. Thankfully, less than usual, it seems, that believe that God has a hand in this new coronavirus, COVID-19, to those who have been afflicted and infected, to get our attention and to try to teach us something. Let's get back to the biblical story to see what Jesus has to say about such a misguided understanding of the nature and character of God. Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's work might be revealed in him. The man's blindness is, in fact, not the result of his nor his parents' sin. Whatever the cause, however, we learn that Jesus can use it to reveal how God is at work. So instead of judgment and social distancing, Jesus made an occasion for grace and healing and inclusion. And we learn that this may indeed help guide us during this time when all of our normal routines have been disrupted as a result of this viral pandemic. Where can we, you and I, see God at work in our lives at this very moment? Well, I think one obvious answer to that is that we are faced with an occasion to express much more radical care and compassion for others. We're making strong efforts to actually be more intentional about reaching out and connecting with others, emotionally and spiritually, even if not physically for the foreseeable future. And while many of us are simply inconvenienced from our normal routine at the moment, we are witnessing what Jill Duffield, the editor of the Presbyterian Outlook, stated this week. Those already on the edge are being pushed closer to falling off. Families, for instance, experiencing food insecurity are stressing about what it means for schools to close and the source of their children's breakfast and lunch along with it. And the part of our economy that does not extend to those who have no health insurance, no paid sick leave, no safety net, is revealing how perilously many of our neighbors, if not us, live. We are all deeply concerned about those who are paid as hourly wage earners, those who live paycheck to paycheck, those businesses that have been forced to close, and certainly for those who are sick and the elderly who are especially vulnerable and increasingly isolated. But also at this time, we must be concerned for those who are already marginalized and living in poverty. In other words, too many of God's children are already isolated, socially distanced, walked over, unseen, and left out. So Jesus tells us in this text 
that their circumstances are decidedly not a result of their sin and ought instead to be an occasion to revealing the loving, healing, and compassionate work of God. And as the church, God is working in and through us right now to pray for and reach out to the most vulnerable, the most easily disregarded in our communities, but also for those on the front lines of this pandemic, our health care workers who are already exhausted and stretched, and those who depend on the travel industry, and those parents struggling with what it means to care for their children during this time of isolation. And the list continues, and it is long, and it varies from one community to another. God is working in and through this crisis to remind us how connected we really are and how interdependent the whole human family really is. And God is also working in and through the fact that we are all more aware of and indeed experiencing, as the Apostle Paul reminds us, when one of us suffers, we all suffer. And it may sound strange to say, but suffering can actually lead to deeper connections with others and with God. And to seeing countless small moments of grace and expressions of love. God's healing love is at work right now. And as we prayerfully discern how to do ministry virtually or remotely, let's think about and stay connected with one another like never before. This is a great opportunity. But let us also remember those for whom isolation and social distancing has been the norm, not the exception. Let's see them as well as each other and ask God to reveal to us how we can extend the healing and inclusive love of Christ. And during our isolation, may we have a growing knowledge and experience that we are not alone. So may you experience the reality of God's sacred presence with you and within you, and also know that God is always for you and for the entire human family, indeed for all of creation itself. So peace, comfort, hope, and blessings be to you. Amen, and let us pray. God of love and grace, these are indeed very difficult and trying times. For we are experiencing things we have never had to experience before. So we pray that you will be with us all in our anxiousness and our fear to bring that peace and understanding that only comes from you. But in the process, may we also reach out to others like never before reminding ourselves that we are indeed one human family. So lift us up when we are discouraged. Bring hope into our lives. But we especially do pray indeed for those health care professionals, doctors and nurses who are putting their lives on the line for their neighbors. We pray for the scientists and disease experts who are working feverishly on vaccines and testing mechanisms. Lord, give us all wisdom and be with those in positions of political power. Give them wisdom, give them courage. May we all be strengthened and helped during this time, not further isolated. And within our own community of faith this week, we pray for the healing presence, the physical, emotional, and spiritual healing for Barbara, Norman, Nancy, Bobby, Francis, and Margaret. And even as we have experienced three deaths within our own community of faith this very week, we pray for the families of Vance, David, and Jeanette, 
and we give you thanks for their life and for their love. Hear us now as we pray together Jesus' prayer. Our God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As our benediction, know that wherever you are this day, God is with you and goes before you to lead you in the way, that God goes behind you to encourage you, that God goes above you to bless you, and God goes beneath you to support you, that God goes beside you to befriend you, and God goes within you to empower you to live your life to the glory of God, our Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer, now and forevermore. Amen. And as is our tradition, we now take the light of Christ out into the world.